The best workout split for maximum muscle growth as a natural lifter is one that allows you to hit every muscle group at least twice a week with appropriate volume. It also allows for proper recovery, progression, and ultimately is a split you actually enjoy and can stick to. So I'm going to break down the different workout splits that make the most sense depending on what experience level you're at and how the split evolves over time. And I'm going to touch on some of the key factors within your split that's going to help you maximize what you get out of your training. Stage one, the true beginner splits. If you've been in the gym for one year or less and or you haven't built all that much muscle yet, then this part is for you. Training with a three or four day split makes the most sense here, where if you do three days per week, you'll be hitting full body each time with at least one day of rest between sessions. For four days per week, an upper lower split is best. For example, upper lower rest, upper lower rest rest is the way to go. If you want to build one of these splits out for yourself, check out my dedicated videos on the three day full body and the four day upper lower split. Now, I know you're probably over eager and thinking, no, I want to work out five or six days a week, maybe even seven days a week because more equals better, right, bro? But this is not the way to go as somebody who's still considered new to the gym or training properly. Part of being a beginner is that you're extremely sensitive to training stimulus. So you don't need that much volume to maximize growth here. Three to 10 sets per muscle group per week, each taken to sufficient intensity, which I'll touch on later, is almost always going to be enough to maximize growth as the beginner you are. You can get way more bang for your buck with compound movements. Ah, yes, the good old days where I can grow my tricep from just bench pressing, how I miss the noob gains. Also, if you hear someone say a beginner needs more volume than an advanced lifter to grow, then you're listening to a contrarian and not somebody interested in the actual truth or top-notch education. So since you can squeeze out so many gains from mostly basic compounds with some isolation movements here and there for just three to 10 sets per muscle group across the week, there's no need to have any of these sessions last more than one hour on either of these splits. Stage two, the early intermediate dilemma. Now, once you have a decent amount of mass on you, say at least your first 15 pounds, and you've been lifting properly for more than one year, you can consider yourself transitioning into an early intermediate stage, generally speaking. In other words, noob gains have slowed down quite a bit, and you have to push harder for slightly less progress week after week, month after month. This means volumes will likely need to increase closer to 10 to 20 sets per week range at a higher intensity. Because of this higher volume and still try to hit each muscle group twice per week at least, four to six day splits become a better option. The four day split is still the upper lower split with more isolation movements added in to accumulate more volume across all muscle groups. A five day split is often best as a upper lower rest, push pull legs rest. This is called the hybrid five day split, which I have a whole dedicated video on how to build one out for yourself as well. And a six day split can be a standard push pull legs, push pull legs, rest and repeat, or a standard Arnold split, which is chest back, shoulders and arms, legs, chest back, shoulders and arms, legs, rest, repeat. You can even combine these two and do a hybrid of the push pull legs followed by chest back shoulders arms legs rest and repeat if this is the split you're leaning towards check out my dedicated six day split video you do also have the option to make these splits asynchronous which means it alternates every single week by simply adding in an extra rest day within each cycle for example push pull legs rest repeat now yes you can make your own split with any combination of muscle groups or undulating frequencies for them but the chances are you haven't gotten to the point to truly determine your physique's strengths or weaknesses yet. I honestly see this mistake so often. Beginner or early intermediate lifters jumping into, let's say my online membership program, wanted to customize their splits for some specialty focused split with undulating volumes from one meso to the next because it makes them feel smart and it makes them think they'll optimize their physiques better this way. But in reality, they are just overcomplicating things when they haven't built out a good enough base of both muscle mass and understanding of training fundamentals, including even proper execution of each lift yet. So stick to the basic splits for now. Focus on things that matter more within your split first, and then you'll earn your way to playing around with the split you want in any way that you want. Now is not the time yet. Pay your dues first. Let's move on to stage three, the true intermediate and beyond. Once you've paid the dues and have developed a pretty solid foundation to your physique, you can probably actually determine weak and strong points now after training properly and consistently for two to three years. This would put you in the intermediate and beyond category of which now the workout split game becomes way more nuanced and fluid. In fact, you'll probably never need to watch any more videos on splits once you're in this stage for a little while and you go beyond it. Now, if your goal is still maximum gains at this point, then four to six days a week will still be the sweet spot for the rest of your journey, unless 
something comes up forcing you to either reduce frequency or change priorities in life, which would be tragic because what could possibly be more important than gains, right? Anyways, in these cases, dropping at two or three days per week at any point throughout your journey can be fine as you've got enough mass to look solid and you've got some gains that can still be made if programmed very well, but they are usually less than ideal for maximum gains. Now, we've established you'll probably lift between four to six days a week for the rest of your life, but now your freedom and how you arrange the split increases massively. Even though volumes stay roughly the same going forward, which are again somewhere between 10 and 20 sets per week per muscle group, you can now cycle volume from one training block to the next according to strengths and weaknesses in your physique. This means you might get up to more than 20 sets per muscle group in a week that you want to focus on while dropping dominant muscle groups down to less, maybe just five sets a week. You can also mix and match muscle groups and exercise selection according to said priorities. For example, adding a dedicated arm day to really add tons of more direct fresh volume to the buys and tries, or putting side and rear delts on both push and pull days, effectively training them upwards of three to four times per week. Splits can really be anything at this point, and chances are sticking to a standard split, as we mentioned before, won't make all that much sense since everyone's physique has weak points and needs different focuses, responds differently to training, etc. For example, my split has changed multiple times across just the last 12 month bulk, and it's currently on a push, pull, legs, arms, rest, repeat cycle with more delt focused push days, much higher arm volume and frequencies, and very low leg volumes as those are a strong point. Not only will you be much more at liberty to mix and match things according to the ever-changing priorities that come about, but you'll also have enough training history recorded as well as experience to better understand which exercises, combinations of them, and muscle groupings work best together for you. Hell, I've even had calf and back days where I started my sessions with tons of calves up front and I gave almost no shits about the back work I did after. I have plenty of examples of some weird splits over the years throughout my channel you can see for yourself according to where my physique was at that time. Overall though, it usually comes down to something built off of the templates from the generic workout split options that already exist, and it's more so optimizations of exercise order and selection and how volume is actually organized that changes the most here. At the end of the day, the training split you choose is still far less important than the key factors within your training sessions and each week that's going to result in the best progress, almost regardless of the split it's. So as a reminder, let's briefly go over some of these important factors. Training intensity and volume. Your split means very little if you lack sufficient intensity per session and per set. You should probably take every set very close to failure, generally within zero and two reps in reserve for that set to be as effective as possible at stimulating growth. Now, unless you program in extremely low volumes, which is not ideal for maximum growth, as I've already broken down many times, and as the literature itself would show, then going all the way to failure on most of your compound lists will probably be less than ideal also. Check out my full video breakdown where I discuss training to failure to better understand this. Regardless, if you fall into the volume parameters outlined for the splits we've already discussed, taking every set to within zero and two reps in reserve probably makes the most sense, keeping solid technique, of course. Let's understand the difference between efficiency versus maximum results. Keep in mind that training for maximum growth and results at every stage is not the same as training for maximum efficiency. People misconstrue this and end up falling for these low volume, high intensity approaches, thinking that they're objectively better for growth. No, they're objectively better to get more growth out of less time. But if you aren't short on time, then the very nature of maximizing gains is literally inefficient. Yes, you can get 80% of your gains from the lower volumes with sufficient intensity, but to get an extra 20%, which many of us are interested in, you're gonna have to do more volume and more frequency in the gym, generally speaking. And mind you, 20% gains year over year can have a serious impact in just a few years. And if you are short on time, don't worry. Drop into two or three days per week for a temporary period won't have you losing any gains, assuming that you program it properly and focus on progressive overload. Which brings me to the next point, and stop me if you've heard this one before, tracking your training sessions. As always, it wouldn't be a John Mango video if I wasn't reminding you to track your goddamn training sessions. Progressive overload is key, of course, but gathering training history over time will prove absolutely invaluable as the years go on. Not to mention, it's as easy as downloading a free app like Gravitas, which is the one that I use, and it will make your experience in the gym even better. I promise you will regret not doing this sooner. So start today. And what about ideal rep ranges and rest times? So quickly touching on reps, six to 15 reps is going to be the sweet spot that encompasses most of the exercises in a hypertrophy focused training program with rest times between sets falling between 90 seconds and three minutes. Yes, sometimes going above this on bigger lifts can make sense, but for the love of God, 
please stop resting four minutes between bicep curl sets of four reps. That is hilariously dumb and lazy. Now let's touch on some of the frequently asked questions I get surrounding workout splits in general that you might have after watching this. Question one, is the upper lower split the new best split that exists based on all of the data. What about the influencers these days talking about the upper lower split and how it's the best for growth? These motherfuckers will be telling you in a year from now how revolutionary the push-pull leg split is or how the Arnold split has scientifically been proven superior in XYZ cases based on all of the latest data or the bro split is just as good or better than the other splits and so on and so on into eternity. It's all bullshit. There is no single best split or way to train for everyone. They want to sell you into their methodologies, sound contrarian, and cherry pick as much of the data as they can to seem extremely intelligent in the process. Any truly experienced lifter or master of the game could never fall for this. I make videos like this to hopefully simplify processes such as workout splits for those of you caught in the endless confusion by the latest science-based influencer that's going to change their mind the moment the next study drops. Question two, what about the bro split? Just to be clear on the bro split, by the way, yes, it is a viable split. Yes, you can grow significantly on it when programmed well. No, it is not as effective as higher frequency splits for beginners to intermediate lifters, and often not for advanced lifters either, as you can simply not productively cram in enough volume to maximize growth across a week for a muscle group in a single session most of the time. But if you truly enjoy it far more, by all means, jump on it. Who knows, your mindset around it may evolve down the line anyways, as is a natural part of the process. Question three, what about splits for women? When it comes to splits for women, the concepts all apply, but it's very viable to actually focus a lot more on the lower body. In fact, most splits that I program for women, whether it's my one-on-one -on -one clients or those in my membership, is usually heavier lower body emphasis, which can have three leg days per week oftentimes. You just gotta make sure that it's programmed properly to be able to take into account the overlap and recovery well. Of course, women can follow the basic splits outlined above all the same as well. Question four, what about seven day splits? Training every single day. Now, on my channel, I made a video a few years ago discussing how I was doing this, and it is definitely possible, but personally, I struggled to stay injury free when I was on it after a few months straight. While I could have probably been smarter about it, perhaps deloaded or programmed better over time as progress was made, the truth is I never really recommend seven day splits. One day committed to fully resting and recovering from the weights per week really can go a long way and it makes programming easier as a result. Seven days a week can overcomplicate the programming at times and there's a good chance zero extra gains will come from it anyways. So I encourage you to spend those extra one to two hours a week finding something else to do with your time and who knows, you might find something you like outside of the gym. I know, it, it hard, I hardly believed it myself. I mean, a life outside of the gym? <sighs> Crazy concept. Seriously though, let me reiterate, since no extra gains will be coming from seven days a week, you could otherwise get from properly programmed four to six days a week, one could argue it's really not needed and the time could be better spent elsewhere. By the way, I fully refreshed my maximum mass training program and I packed every single thing in this video plus tons of data and all fully programmed splits inside of it for the same price as my older maximum mass programs. And you can grab those in the link in the description below if you're interested. For women, you can grab the female version called Muscle Mommy with splits that are more tailored towards women looking to get jacked and build an incredible physique as well. I look out for all of my viewers. Also, anything else you may need to help take results to the next level fast can be found in the description as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And as always, your support means the world. Feel free to drop a comment below letting me know what split you're running or which one is your favorite. Also, what you'd like to see next on the channel. And I'll see you in that next one. I'm out.